Hi, this is Peter Cooper, editor of Ruby Weekly and numerous other email newsletters. You can find me on Twitter at Peter C. It's an honor to be with you today. So if you're here solely for object-oriented design, refactoring and so on, then you might want to give this video a swerve because we're digging into binary. So here's a quick refresher. Normally we represent numbers using digits zero through nine, decimal system, we all know what that is. But in the binary system, we can also represent numbers, but we have just two digits, zero and one. Any number can be represented using zeros and ones as with decimal. So we want to represent zero, zero, easy. And one, again, easy. But what about two? We don't have a digit two, but the number two can be represented as one zero. It's not 10, but one zero. So instead of having tens and hundreds and thousands as our columns in our numbers, we have twos, fours, eights, sixteens, and so on. Now Ruby lets us work with binary representations and also convert between binary and decimal quite easily. So let's say we want to know what 42 is in binary. We could work it out, but let's get Ruby to do the work. Now what we do is tell Ruby to convert the decimal 42 to a string that represents the binary version. It's 101010. Hmm, not suspicious at all there. So we can also represent numbers directly in binary as Avdi showed you in episode one of Ruby Tapas. We just prefix with 0b. Now note that we can also convert back from a string representation of binary to decimal using two underscore i. The argument of two here is just telling two i that the representation is in base two, a synonym for binary. Without it, Ruby assumes base 10, decimal, and we'd get 101,010. Now Ruby lets us perform special operations upon binary representations that we call bitwise operations. And they basically just manipulate things at the level of each bit. But what's a bit, you say? So if you take 101010 so on, each digit is a bit. Each bit is the smallest unique portion of a computer's memory, whether that's regular memory, a register, or whatever. And bit is just a shortened version of binary digit, just to tie together some terminology. Uh, but also, 8 bits is now typically called a byte. Historically, a byte had no specific length, and it was just the smallest addressable unit of memory upon an architecture. So let's start with some Ruby-specific methods that aren't entirely bitwise operations, but get us headed in that direction. So we'll take our 42 and then we'll ask Ruby to tell us what individual bits of it are set to. So what's the first bit, what's the second bit, and so on. Using the square bracket method here on the Ruby number lets us address individual bits of that number. Another thing we can see is the bit length of a number. That is the minimum number of bits that are required to represent that number. For example, the bit length of 42 is 6, whereas 255, the largest number that can be stored within 8 bits, comes out at 8. And just one digit higher, 256, we need nine bits. As an aside, this can be used as an interesting and quick way to determine if a number is a power of two or not. Just take a number x, and if x's bit length is not the same as the bit length of x minus one, it must be a power of two, as the number of bits needed to represent it has just increased by one at that, that very point. So now onto the true primary bitwise operations. You may have heard them before. They're called and, or, xor, and not. The AND operation isn't the same as the logical AND that you might use on an IF statement or on conditionals in Ruby. Instead, it's an operation that takes two binary digits, or even a you know, complete number, a complete field of bits, and then compares each bit in each respective position of the two inputs. And then only applies a 1 on the output if both bits on the input are 1, 2. So this is best shown visually using what's called a truth table. And this shows all combinations. So you have column 1, column 2, those are the two inputs. Column 3 is then the output after the AND operation. In code, we can also demonstrate. Notice that the AND operator is just a single ampersand, unlike the logical AND in Ruby, which is a double ampersand. The OR operation is a bit like the AND operation, except the output bit is 1 if either of the input bits is a 1, as you can see here. Or again, in code. XOR is again a bit like OR, but with the proviso that the output bit is only one if one and only one of the input bits is a one. So with OR, if both input bits were one, the output would still be one. But with XOR, the output would be zero unless only one of those input bits was one. NOT, in theory, is the easiest, but uh, in practice it's actually a bit of a pain in Ruby. Uh, if you take a string of bits and then you flip the ones to zeros and the zeros to ones, you're good. Uh, but the truth table you know, is, is very simple, as you can see. But the problem is that due to how numbers are represented internally in Ruby and many other languages, flipping all of the bits has the interesting side effect of making them negative when they're represented in decimal. 
However, a compounding problem here is that Ruby isn't really returning the internal representation of the number using 2s. We don't have negative binary, um, as we can analyze if we look at each individual bit. And this demonstrates that the not is not actually working properly. But due to the way that negative numbers are stored and represented, things get complicated when it comes to rendering decimal equivalents. This could be the topic for an entire other video, so we'll pause on that one. Before I show a quick example of practical uses for these, I want to quickly touch on shifting, which is kind of related to the bitwise operations. So we take 101 and we shift it to the left, do this in Ruby very easily with the two less than uh, sign operator, and we take our 101 and it becomes 1010, so a zero has been pushed into the right-hand side there. We've shifted it all left, and we can shift it all right again using the opposite, the shift right operator. Now, due to how binary is built around powers of two, this all has an interesting side effect of doubling and halving numbers when you shift left and right. Let's try it on decimal. Take 24, shift left once, we get 48. Um, and this works just really well. Uh, if we shift to the right, however, it divides by two. But because we're working with binary, if it's like an odd number and we divide by two, we don't get any decimal places, we just lop off the bit at the end. Now, shifting is commonly used at the machine code level to optimize multiplication, since shifting bits are a lot quicker than doing true multiplication. If this intrigues you, you might want to look at rotation, which is a little bit like shifting, but instead of the digits being lost off of either end uh, of a, you know, a representation or a value, they get looped around to the other end of the value, so they're being rotated around a value rather than just shifted left or right. So how are bitwise operations useful in Ruby or even programming generally? This is mostly an exercise for you. Google uses for bitwise operations. Tons of stuff will come up. But some quick ideas. So let's say you're doing socket programming or interacting with low-level C libraries. You'll often encounter very quirky ways that data has been packed using binary uh, for efficiency purposes and low memory use and so on. So in a single byte, for example, we have eight bits and we can all use them individually if we want. We could have eight single on or offs. We could have two four-bit numbers, so on. So let's say we have two four-bit numbers we want to put in here. We have the number six and nine. We want to represent these within that single byte. We can very easily place one number into the lower four bits. We just do an assignment. But how do we get the other number into the higher four bits? You know, saying x equals nine gets us nine into the lower four bits. The six will take more work. But all we have to do is shift it left by four bits and then add on whatever that is to the original value. Bam, it works. But now what do we want to extract both of these numbers? Well, one way is to use what's called a bit mask. And what you do is you kind of mark the area you want to extract using one number. So uh, 0b11110000, that will just pull out the top four bits. And then we end it with our original value to pull out only that marked part. Of course, if we pull out higher bits and we want to get them back to their original representation, we need to shift them back to the right again. And of course, we can do the same just to get the lowest four bits out as well. Now, this sort of stuff is very useful to know when working with things like color values, IP addresses, file formats, or network packets at a low level. And a similar technique is often used in C to store simple on and off flags. So think about like eight one-bit values on and off flags. Uh, let's say we want to represent things on a blog post. So is it private or not? Is it published or not? Has it been deleted or not? We can do this very easily. Now, in Ruby, what I could do is I could give these flags values of 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, and so on. And then to turn on and off the bits on a value, you just use or. That turns the bits on or off. And then you can use the and um, bitwise operation to check if bits are set. So a bit like that bit mask thing, but just doing it on a single bit. A non-zero value represents true in this case. We can then use XOR to turn off a flag. And actually, XOR would actually toggle the flag on and off if you kept using it. Give it a go. See why that is. Now, if you thought active records enums were clever, imagine having this going on them. So this has become a bit more of a feast than a tapas, so sorry about that, but uh, if you want to keep investigating, bitwise operations are also used in a ton of things like compression, checksums, hashing. Uh, if you want to take two graphics and overlay them on top of each other, you get some cool effects with the different, um, different bitwise operations. You can do cryptography, uh, like XORing values with a key and stuff like that. You can toggle them backwards and forwards. Um, working with network addresses and also swapping values without an intermediary, you can do this with the XOR operator, so have a play. There's a ton more you can do, but that's it. So uh, follow me at PTC if you want, subscribe to Ruby Weekly, and uh, goodbye and good night.